Welcome back to the Educate community. If it's your first time here, I'm Rebecca Simons, and this is the channel where we discuss all things ed tech. As teachers, we all wish we had more of one thing, time. Now, while I can't miraculously add more hours to your day, what if I could help you reclaim time so you could choose where you want to spend it? This video is part of our series covering AI tools for education. Today, we're focusing on brisk teaching. This tool has recently been getting a lot of attention for its inspect writing feature, which can help you decide whether your students used AI to complete an assignment by watching a replay of how their work was created. But that's not all Brisk can do. It's packed with tools to streamline feedback, level texts, create lesson resources, and more. We're going to dive into all of that in this video. But before we get started, I would love it if you could please take a second to give this video a like, hit subscribe, and share with a teacher friend. Your engagement is what helps us to reach more educators and expand our community. Brisk is a Chrome extension, so to get started, you'll need to install it on your Chrome browser. Simply head to briskteaching.com and click Add to Chrome for free. This will take you to the Chrome Web Store, or you could head directly to the Web Store and search Brisk Teaching. Once you're in the Web Store, click the blue Add to Chrome button. Click to agree to the terms and services, then sign in with your Google account. The first time you log into Brisk, it will ask you a few questions to help personalize your account to your needs. Once you have the extension installed, click on the puzzle piece icon and pin Brisk to your toolbar so it's easily accessible to toggle on and off. When the extension is activated, you'll see it appear as an icon in the bottom right corner of your screen. Simply click on it to access your Brisk menu options. Tip, you can also click and drag to move the extension icon and the menu around on your screen. Like most ed tech tools, Brisk is a freemium platform, which means certain features are behind a paywall. However, they offer a powerful forever free version, which has over 20 tools. When you sign up for Brisk, you'll automatically get a premium trial. Premium tools are indicated by a ribbon. After your trial is over, the ribbon will change to a lock. You can extend your trial by sharing about Brisk with fellow educators or by becoming Brisk certified. You can find the certification course at briskteaching.com, resources, professional development, then scroll down and click take a certification course. While you're on the resources page, don't forget to check out all the other resources that Brisk has available. When you click on the Brisk icon, you'll see four main categories. Create, give feedback, inspect writing, and change level. We're going to break down each category and demo how you can use them in your classroom, starting with change level. Let's say that you're learning about the Titanic and you found a fantastic article for your class, but the reading level isn't accessible for all of your students. No problem. You can modify the entire article or highlight a specific section for Brisk to modify. To level a text, click on the Brisk icon, then select Change Level. Brisk will analyze the current reading level of the article, which will appear at the top of the window. Select your desired reading level from the drop-down menu and the language you'd like it translated into. When you click Change Reading Level, Brisk will automatically create a Google Doc pulling in an image, a link back to the original article, and a modified version of the text. From here, you can begin to make adjustments, making it shorter, longer, adding more or less detail. You can also make 
custom adjustments to the text by typing in the changes you'd like made and clicking brisket. For example, you might customize this article to include key vocabulary terms from your unit. A new version of the text with your requested changes will be created directly under the original. All you need to do is simply delete out the old version. Once Brisk has leveled your text, you then have the option to create an add-on. These are additional resources based on the article, such as a quiz, a lesson plan, or a vocab list. You can also use this feature to change the level of a text that's already in a Google Doc. Here's an article that I used with my seventh grade class for a close reading assignment. Now, Brisk is actually identifying this at a ninth grade reading level. I'm going to follow the exact same process as I did earlier, and I'm going to change this to a fifth grade reading level. Remember, it's incredibly important to read over any modified text that AI generates to make sure you're happy with it. For example, Brisk changed the title of the speech to talk at the opening of the Space Doctor place instead of the original title, Remarks at the Dedication of the Aerospace Medical Health Center. While this might be a simplification, I'd still want the title of the speech to stay the same. When you're using generative AI, you can't check your brain at the door. You are ultimately the one who's going to be responsible for the content that you place in front of your students. If you're creating several versions of a single text at different reading levels, you might want an easy way to help keep things organized. One option would be to type the grade level or even the Lexile level in the document title. However, you could also opt for a visual reference using emojis. Simply right-click in the title and select Emojis and Symbols. For example, if I type in Circle, then I'm presented with circles in a variety of colors. I could then create a color key code that lets me know as the teacher that any article with a purple circle is always a fourth grade reading level. This allows you to level articles for your students with a little more privacy. Next, let's see how Brisk can save you even more time with its robust Create category. When you click on Create, you'll see sections for Curriculum, Administrative Tasks, and Interventions. If you don't see exactly what you need, try the Something Else option under Curriculum Essentials. For example, I could use the something else option to generate a list of tier two and tier three vocabulary words for the JFK speech with definitions and example sentences at a fifth grade level. As you've seen, Brisk can create content based on a website, a Google Doc, but it can also create content from a YouTube video or like I just modeled, a prompt that you wrote yourself. Tip, the more specific your instructions, the better the results. For instance, check out the difference when I simply asked for a list of vocabulary for the JFK speech versus the more detailed prompt I used earlier. Content is usually generated in a Google Doc, but you'll also see options to create in forms for quizzes or Google Slides for a presentation. Each create option has simple drop downs and an open prompt box with instructions on what type of content you need to provide. For example, under lesson plan, the prompt box asks me to specify what the lesson plan should cover. I then have the option to select up to three standards to align the lesson to and drop downs to specify the grade level, the length of the lesson, and the target language. Some of my favorite create features include DOK questions, the rubric creator, and the exemplar generator. I could have Brisk help me create a rubric for a writing assignment, then paste the prompt into the exemplar generator to create exemplars at different proficiency levels. 
you could easily turn these resources into a powerful student-centered activity. Have your students take the role of experts by grading the exemplars using the BRIS generated rubric. Then have them switch gears and score their own work reflecting on steps they can take to improve their writing. If you aren't happy with what BRIS creates, you always have the option to tell it what to change and it will generate a new version directly below the original content. Giving students effective feedback has a significant impact on learning, but it's also time consuming. By the time I was able to make it through 150 pieces of student writing, they had forgotten they even wrote something, let alone what the prompt was about, making the feedback I was spending time generating less valuable. Using a tool like Brisk can help your feedback to become more timely and targeted. Let's break down the Give Feedback features. Brisk has four options for feedback. Targeted, which is a premium feature, Glows and Grows, Rubric Criteria, and Next Steps. For each type of feedback, you can customize it to match your goals. Start by choosing either up to three standards or uploading a rubric, then provide an area of focus for your feedback. Once you've given feedback on a minimum of five assignments, you can then utilize Feedback Insights, which can be accessed by clicking on the little chart icon next to the More menu. This feature analyzes the past 10 assignments for strengths and growth areas. This insight is invaluable for helping you plan data-driven future instruction for your students. From here, you can create a lesson plan or a resource based on this feedback. Once you've finished scoring an assignment, you can clear all of the insights so that Brisk is ready to start gathering data for the next assignment. Now, my son's amazing fifth grade teacher shared some de-identified writing pieces with us so we could actually see Brisk in action on a student assignment. When you use Glows and Grows, Rubric Criteria, or Next Steps, Brisk will generate the feedback in the extension menu. You can then copy the individual sections of feedback or copy all the feedback at once to paste into a new location like your LMS. The other option is to use the insert button, which will paste it directly into the Google Doc. If you aren't happy with something about the feedback, you can ask Brisk to make changes. For example, maybe I only want it to give me feedback on the introduction and conclusion. You can also directly modify any of the feedback before copying or inserting into the Google Doc. Unlike the other forms of feedback that generate in the prompt box, targeted feedback will add the feedback as a comment directly on specific portions of the Google Doc. Once it's finished generating, you can modify any of the comments before posting, or you can simply click cancel to remove the comment from the document. When I was playing around with it, I thought the feedback was a little formal for fifth grade. So I asked it to provide feedback in fifth grade friendly language. Here's the difference between when I left the prompt box empty versus when I asked it to use fifth grade friendly language. I actually put them side by side so you could see the difference. When I asked it to use friendlier language, it said, can you think of a time when a skill you learned in a digital game helped you with something at school or at home? versus your reason could be more persuasive if you specify which skills are improved and how they are applicable to real life situations. If you're taking this as part of the one hour course, I'm going to give you a copy of this document where I've placed in the student essay sample and then showed you what the feedback looked like for all four kinds, targeted, rubric, glow and grow, and next steps. I also went through and showed you what kind of language I placed in the prompt box and how it affected my results versus when I simply left the prompt box empty. 
The only caveat I'll add is that I did add a rubric for it to base its feedback off of. Every time I try out a new generative AI, I feel like it's learning how to work with a new employee or a new coworker. All of them respond slightly differently to prompting. I'm still playing around with the best way to prompt risk, so if you have suggestions, I would love to hear them. With generative AI everywhere, a big teacher question is, how do we catch when students are using it without permission? Holly Clark, an ed tech thought leader and author of the AI-infused classroom, has created a fantastic graphic explaining why using AI detectors is unreliable. To learn more, check out her blog post about this topic linked in the description down below. So if AI detectors aren't the answer, then what should we do? Holly's graphic offers some great ideas, but Brisk's inspect writing feature adds another tool to our toolkit. So let's jump in and see how it works. I've pulled up a piece that I wrote for the Educate Community Google group to demo this with. On the main menu, you can click on the hourglass for a quick snapshot of how much time was spent on editing this document. When you click on inspect writing, you can watch a replay of the student's creation process at varying speeds, allowing you to see their thought process in action. You can also analyze data such as how much time the student spent editing the document, the number of edits that were made, and where large sections of text were copied and pasted. If I click on one of these icons, it highlights the text that was copied. If you're giving targeted feedback through comments, you can also see where feedback was left on the document and how students may have revised their assignment based on your feedback. These insights help you as the expert educator to decide whether a conversation about generative AI use is needed. I personally love how this tool emphasizes the creation process over a policing policy. Brisk also has an AI detector built into the inspect writing tool. Click on the magnifying glass at the top of replay. This will give you an estimation of the likelihood of AI writing being present. I actually tested it on a piece of my writing that I knew I had used generative AI to help write. And it came back as AI writing unlikely. All that to say, make sure that you're using the AI detector as only one data point and not as the final word. I hope you'll go try out Brisk and experience some time-saving magic for yourself. Feel free to share about your thoughts or experiences with using Brisk in the comments down below. If you found this video helpful, please show your support with a like, subscribe to the Educate community for more EdTech tips and tutorials, and share this video to help another teacher discover Brisk. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thank you.